Hello people, in this video let us look at the classification of uveitis. First of all, what is uh, uvea? Uvea is basically iris, ciliary body and choroid put together. These are vascular and developmentally these are um, single unit. So they are saying the entire uveal tract developmentally, structurally and functionally they are one indivisible structure. So that is why uvea is one thing. So let us look at the image to understand where exactly we are. We are talking about this one, iris, right, iris, ciliary body and the choroid. Choroid is in behind the retina, that orange is the choroid, right. So it is a middle vascular layer. So what and all are there in uvea, iris, ciliary body and the choroid. So, you have understood what uvea is. Now, what is uvea? Uveitis. Inflammation of uvea is uveitis. Why did we actually want to make this video? For classification of uveitis, right? So, let us go to classification. Classification can be so many ways. You have anatomical classification uh, of this inflammatory condition, right? Anatomical classification, then you have... Uh, clinical classification, acute, chronic, etc., pathological classification, superative, non-superative, granulomatous, non-granulomatous. Then you have uh, etiological classification, in infective, immune, etc. So it is not difficult. Let us look at anatomical classification. Anatomical classification is important. Here you have anterior uveitis. This is very important and very common. Anterior uveitis means what? The anterior part of the uvea is affected. So, Anterior, what and all you have? You have the iris, right? Here you have the iris and the ciliary body. Ciliary body, again, they are dividing into two things, okay? So, if the anterior part of the ciliary body and the iris together are involved, it is called as anterior uveitis. So, here the, you can have iritis, that is inflammation of iris, and you can have iridocyclitis. Cyclitis will refer to the initial part of the ciliary body. So, read this. It is inflammation of the uveal tissue from iris up to the past plicata of the cereal, ciliary body. So, what and all are involved here? The iris and the past plicata of the ciliary body. It may be subdivided into iritis, which is affecting the iris, right? It can be iridocyclitis, where you have iris and the past plicata part of the ciliary body involved. Then you have anterior cyclitis in which pars plicata part of the ciliary body. So anterior cyclitis means iris they have not involved, right? So anterior uveitis, what and all you have? Iritis, iridocyclitis. Mainly you can remember this too. If only the ciliary body, that pars plicata part of the ciliary body are in, is involved, then it is called as anterior cyclitis. So what are we looking at? We are looking at the um, anatomical classification of uh, uveitis. We finished the anterior uveitis. This is more common, so it is better to know this, okay? Then, intermediate uveitis, we will come to that. Then you have posterior uveitis. Posterior means obviously the behind part is affected. Behind what do you have? Behind you have the choroid. So, choroid is involved. So, it will be called choroiditis. So, it is posterior uveitis or choroiditis. And uh, here, what will be there? It is, this um, can involve surrounding structures like there can be inflammation of the retina, so, instead of choroiditis, they can say chorioretinitis also because sometimes the surrounding structures also get involved, okay. But anyways, posterior uveitis, what is there at the back? Um, posterior part of the uvea is choroid, so choroiditis. Now, intermediate uveitis is what? Intermediate is something in between. So, anyways, let's just look at this again. So, posterior means what is involved? The choroid is involved, right? That is posterior uveitis or choroiditis okay then what is this intermediary intermediary means somewhere here neither anterior neither posterior right so somewhere here you will have what intermediary uveitis so let us look at that intermediate sorry intermediate uveitis it is inflammation of the pars plana not the uh, in, in, in the front what did they call it they called it as pars plicata behind they are calling it as pars plana so, if the pla pars plana is involved, right, if the pars plana is involved, they are calling it as what? Intermediate uveitis. So, pars plana and the peripheral part of the retina 
and underlying choroid is called as pars planitis. So it can be intermediate uveitis or pars planitis. So surrounding structures can get involved like peripheral part of the retina, underlying choroid etc can be involved. So now you understood anatomical classification isn't it. So there is one more thing here, one more terminology here called as pan uveitis. Pan uveitis means everything is involved, all the, uh, the anterior, posterior and the intermediate. So pan uveitis, of the, that means whole uvea is involved. This can happen in sympathetic ophthalmitis. Then there's one more word wait. Look at the terminology here, sympathetic ophthalmitis and voked Koyanagi Harada's disease. These are all pan uveitis, everything, all the uh, parts are involved, okay. So we looked at an anatomical classification of uveitis. Let us look at the difference also. If it is anterior, if it is posterior, if it is intermediate. Okay, anterior will be, anterior will usually be, okay, where are we here? It will involve the iris, right? Anterior will usually be idiopathic, that is unknown cause will be there. There will be pain, there will be redness, there will be loss of vision. And um, usually you will treat it with topical steroids because anyways it is uh, more front, right? So you can give topical treatments. And as there is pain in the anterior uveitis, you can also give cycloplegics. What happens in the intermediate uveitis? <clears throat> what is affected? Pars plana, right? And even uh, surrounding things can get affected. So in this, again, it is idiopathic condition. No idea why it happens. Here, mainly you should remember there will be floaters, okay, for the person there will be floaters, he doesn't have any pain, redness, any problem, only floaters he will have and uh, how will you treat, basically they will give an injection, because it is slightly more behind, they will have to give an injection. Now let's move on to the posterior one, this posterior one means what is affected, the choroid, so it will be, choroid, uh, what would we say, it? chorioretinitis we can call, right, or what is the other word, choroiditis. So in this case, because it is much at the back, right, posterior uh, uveitis, they'll have to give systemic treatment, okay. And in, there will be loss of vision in this case, okay. So loss of vision is there everywhere, right. Redness, anterior uveitis. And here, you'll have to give systemic steroids extra. It can be caused because of toxoplasmosis. So you will have to give some anti, uh, anti-parasitic drug, right. So now we are done with the anatomical classification. We saw anterior, intermediate, posterior. Now let us move on to clinical classification. Clinical what and all you have? Acute, that is easy to understand. Acute, sudden, right? Sudden, acute and chronic. So chronic they are saying 3 months. For uveitis, the duration they are using is 3 months to classify it as chronic. And then you have recurrent uveitis, repeated episodes separated by inactive periods, okay. Then you have pathological classification, superative, or uh, that is again per having pus purulent uveitis, non-superative. Again in non-superative you have two things, granulomatous uveitis and non-granulomatous uveitis. When will you see granulomatous guys, TB, leprosy, syphilis, Standard things that you will write for uh, granulomatous diseases, right? And even in sarcoidosis, okay? So, we are done with pathological classification. Lastly, we want to look at etiological classification, so also called as Duke Elder classification. Here you have infective, immune, toxic, traumatic. Then you have uh, non-infective, something called as non-infective systemic diseases, okay? then idiopathic. So anterior uveitis they said it is mostly idiopathic, even intermediate they said it is idiopathic, isn't it? So we are done with this um, video, we wanted to look at the classification, just the classification of uveitis, we understood what uvea is, uvea is nothing but iris, ciliary body and choroid put together, ciliary body they are dividing it as pars plicata, pars plana. So uh, uveitis is inflammation of the uvea, uveal tract also sometimes they are using this word. Anatomical classification anterior most common for you and here you should know that the iris and the pars plicata are involved. Iris, it is called as iritis, iridocyclitis, etc. Based on what and all are involved. Then you have intermediate uveitis where pars plana is involved. So it is called as pars planitis. Then posterior uveitis, choroiditis, pan uveitis, everything is involved. Clinical classification acute, chronic, recurrent. Pathological classification, superative, non-superative, under non-superative, non-granulomatous and granulomatous, etiological, infective, immune, toxic, traumatic, 
non-infective idiopathic. That's all for now. We will meet you in the next video. Bye bye. Just remember that, guys that an anterior uveitis pain and redness are there. Pain and redness are not seen in the intermediate and the posterior. Okay.